Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning, especially if we have any visitors. Welcome. Please come back to Grace Lower Stone Church anytime. You're always welcome here. Uh, on our prayers this week, we have uh, good news in almost all corners. Francis Beam continues to recover. Craven is recovering. He's uh, still doing his therapy, and we're grateful for that. Uh, Ruby Poole is recovering from her broken fingers and scraped arms. She's doing well. And uh, Harold Ronhart is recovering from his broken arm. However, they have found some things that look a bit suspicious, and he is in uh, consultation now, and they are doing some tests. They're afraid that maybe he has some cancer that's come back. So with Harold, please keep him in your prayers and we'll pray that what they think they see is not what they see, and if they do see something, that there will be an easy treatment for him. Um, do remember that today, after service, there is a congregational meeting. Please do stay for the congregational meeting after church today. Next Sunday, we do begin our contemporary service. Please let all of the young people that are in um, your families and young people that are friends know that it will be at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall next Sunday morning. Uh, this week... This is the last Sunday in Epiphany. We have a new season of the church here that begins this week. It begins on Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday. Please do plan to come here and be here for the service on Ash Wednesday. It's at 7 o'clock in the evening on Ash Wednesday. Next Sunday at the 11 o'clock service, which will be the first uh, 11 o'clock service during Lent, we will have Holy Communion. So if you will all, please plan to be here next Sunday morning. Um, now, there is something that disturbed me after church last week, and I prayed about it a good bit, and uh, I was somewhat worried about it, and that was all of you probably remember that in the middle of the service last week, we had a family that I didn't recognize, and I didn't know if any of you knew them because I didn't have a chance to find out, that I think they were sitting right over here, and they got up and left, and I thought that I heard somebody say that the little girl that was with them was sick, but I wasn't sure. And so it happens that this family, the, the older people in the family were actually from New Jersey. The young girl that was with them was their granddaughter and she lives here in the Rockwell area. And uh, the lady on Wednesday sent me an email. That was so cool, I thought, that she took the time out to send an email. And she said something to me in the email that I wanted to pass on to you. She said that the reason she was sending the email was to let you guys know that you did everything right, that she was welcomed, she felt like that this was a warm place to worship, and that she was very pleased with having been there. The problem was that the young girl, was, which was her granddaughter who lives locally, she was having a problem. She wasn't feeling well, and she thought it was best for them to go ahead and leave. So, she, But she took the time out this week to let us know that she enjoyed being here for the short time she was, and of course I sent her an email back and told her when you're back in North Carolina, please do come to visit with us again. But I did want everybody to know that it wasn't anything that we had done that they left for, uh, it was just that the young lady that was with them was not feeling well. Okay, uh, does anybody else have any announcements? Search committee, Search committee meeting will be on Tuesday night. Uh, what time is that, seven? Seven, seven o'clock, okay. Anything else? Yes, I was going to remember that in the prayers, but I will definitely. I, I will tell you now instead of waiting till then. Uh, Josh, uh, Josie Blong's husband, Josie McNeely Blong, had surgery this past week, and all is well from what I've heard so far. I, uh, after the surgery, I got the word back that he all was going well. So, um, Is there anything else? We will continue with the young people are going to give us a play this morning, and if you'll see in your bulletin, it's called The Three Camels. Uh, this is uh, going back to the beginning of our Epiphany season when we were dealing with the story that brought Epiphany on about the three wise men coming. And as we close Epiphany today, uh, this is Transfiguration Sunday. I'll be talking about that later, but to begin the service, I wanted us to go back to how we began Epiphany with this play about the wise men's three camels. I hope you enjoy. A long time ago, there were three camels named Aaron, Nina, and Penda. They wanted to travel to distant lands and visit wonderful places. The wise men that owned them rarely left their palace. Instead, 
They, sent, they spent their days studying ancient writings and their nights searching the stars. God, please send us on an adventure. And God answered their prayers. Several nights later, the wise men loaded their camels and headed west towards a bright new star. They traveled all through the night and into the next day until they reached an oasis. There they rested in the shade of the big palm trees. Then all of a sudden, Aaron said, turned out to replace a jar on, of myrrh on my back. This is a gift given to a great general, a man willing to serve his people and give his life for them if necessary. His house will be large and he will have hundreds of servants and soldiers attending his needs. You may be right. The, the next morning, wise men continued their journey. They tr after traveling all morning, they stopped at another oasis to rest. I think they may know where we're going. Where? My master Balthazar loaded a chest full of gold on my back. The gold was given to a king. A king must live in a fabulous place <coughs> some place to the west. <coughs> you may be right. After several more days, they arrived at King Herod's palace as his guest. The wise men stayed there, stayed in the, in the palace as the king's guests. In the, in the stable, the cam camels were given water, food, and a place to sleep. But the next morning, the wise men continued their journey without leaving any of their gifts. I don't understand. If not a king, then who? Then all of a sudden, Nina said, I think I know where we're going. Where? My master Gaspar put a container filled with sweet smelling fragrances on my back. Frankincense is the gift given to God. I believe we are going to a great temple. There will be many people offering their gifts and praise to God. We must be visiting someone very special. The next day, the wise men and camels came to Bethlehem, where the wise men entered a house, carrying their gifts with them. That night, the three found room in an in, rooms in an inn. They praised God for what they had seen. During the night, the camels couldn't sleep. They talked about all that had happened. Suddenly, a host of angels appeared before them. We bring you great news. What is it? Each of you thought you knew where you were going to visit. Aaron said it would be a great warrior willing to give his life for his people. You were right. Jesus will give his life for all people, and he will return to conquer all evil. Penda said it would be a great king. You were right, too. Jesus is the eternal king. His kingdom will never end. Nina said it would be a... Nina said it would be God, and this is Roger Bell. Jesus is God's son. allowing them to carry the wise men to Jesus and be a part of such a great event. And then the angels told them, Don't turn to the right or left. And follow us. The 
The next morning, when they left to go home, the heavenly host of angels appeared in front of the camels, but the wise men could not see or hear them. Remember, all you have to do is trust in the Lord and follow us. The camels followed them all the way to their own country. Back at their home, they told all the other animals about their trip. For the rest of their lives, they praised God for choosing them for such a great adventure. The end. Thank you, young people. We appreciate that. We now will move on in our service to the next hymn. We're using the green hymnal this morning. The next hymn is... As with gladness, men of old, it's found on page 290, 290. Let us continue with the call to worship found in your bulletin. Come to the mountain, you people of God. Come, you sisters, to proclaim God's greatness. Come, you brothers, to proclaim God's goodness. Come to proclaim God's brilliance. Come, you people, to the mountain of God. We are here to worship the Lord. Let us continue with our prayer of confession found in the bulletin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us continue at the top of the next page as we all say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you, choir. Uh, at this time, we have reception of four new members into the church. I believe the way I understand it, they actually are returning to Grace Lower Stone. They were members here in the past. If uh, Rick Morgan and his family would please come forward here in front of the rail, we will receive you into membership. We are here to receive Ashley, Madison, Rick, and Terry into the membership of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church. Jesus said, every man who publicly acknowledges me, I shall acknowledge in the presence of my Father in heaven. Do you affirm your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your intention to live a Christian life? Will you, insofar as you are able and by the grace given you, always remain a faithful member of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, coming to the Lord's table, loving and serving God in the world, and bearing witness to the risen Lord? Will you participate in the life and mission of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church, worship regularly, and serve Christ as you are gifted through his family of faith? I ask you, the members of the congregation, do you, the members of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church, welcome Ashley, Madison, Rick, and Terry into full membership with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities? And do you promise them your friendship and prayers as we share our life together as the people of God? I give you the right hand of fellowship, receiving you into the full membership of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church. Welcome. We will continue with the children's message if all the young people would please come to the front.
Good morning. How's everybody doing today? All right, did you have a good week this week? Very good, I'm glad to hear this. Well, later on today, the folks that stay here in the church, I think you're having children's church today, but the folks that stay in the church are going to uh, hear a story about Jesus going up on a mountain. And it's really interesting because when Jesus got up to the mountains, he took some of his friends with him. And after a little bit, the friends fell asleep because it was nighttime when they went up on the mountain. But then we find out that two people that had lived a long time before that and had already died and gone to heaven came to be with Jesus there on the mountain too. And all of them got very, very bright. Have you ever seen a person that looked like they lit up like a light bulb? I've never seen that, have you? No, me either. And neither had... Okay, so in an advertisement on the television, people can do a lot of things that they really can't do. So, so that wasn't real. But, but generally, people can't do that. But because Jesus can do anything, they did. And the, the reason that they were lit up like that was God himself was there present with them. And later, a cloud covered the whole place, and G, uh, God the Father told the disciples and Moses and Elijah that Jesus was, in fact, his son. So this was one more time where God was making sure that we understood that Jesus was his only begotten son. So remember, if anybody ever tells you that Jesus isn't God, that he was just a prophet, then in fact, he is God because God himself, the Father, did tell us several times while Jesus was on earth, Jesus is indeed God. Let us have a prayer now. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these young people and all the young people in the world, and we ask that if you would, uh, please watch after them this week. Watch after each of us this week as well, and bring all of us back to church next Sunday morning. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can go on to Children's Church and see me after church, and we'll get you some candy you can take. I think they've got something else for you down there, so you won't need to do that. But I'll see you after church for some candy. We'll now stand for the doxology as the offering is brought forward. You may be seated. We will now have our congregational prayers. Are there any requests today? Very good. We do indeed want to uh, continue to pray for Josh, uh, Josie's husband, who had. Uh, surgery this week and all is going well Josie very good okay I hadn't heard from her yesterday I assumed that that meant that everything was good so uh, are there any other prayer requests today or any thanksgivings that anybody would like to make John Garrison's family, passed away this week. Okay. John Garrison's family uh, appears John passed away this week we want to remember his family as we pray any others 
I'm sorry, what was that? Yes, indeed, the people of Ukraine. We definitely want to remember them. Larry Petit passed away this week. We want to remember his family as well. Any others? Barbara Hatley lost her husband this week. We want to remember them. Any others? Okay, let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments. We especially ask today that you would send your spirit to guide world leaders. We beg that you would strengthen and sustain the people of Ukraine, O oh Lord. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. Heal those who are in distress, those who we have named here this morning, those suffering with the COVID virus, and those in our parish, Angie, Brent, Cindy, Richard, Francis, Avis, Barbara, Delena, Jim, Wayne, Marianne, Craven, Annie Sue, Sonny, Carolyn, Martha, Calvin, Shelby, Joyce, Ruby, Harold, Chris, Kathy, Louise, Joni, Roger, and Michael. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. We ask that you would bless us on our Lenten journey. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. Since we have such a great hope in your promise, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have the reading of the Old Testament lesson. It's found in Exodus 34, verses 29 through 35. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. And when Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses talked with them, and afterward all the people of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, 
He put a veil on his face. But wherever Moses, whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses would put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with God again. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things which the Lord has commanded you to do. We will now together read the psalm, which is Psalm 99, verses 1 through 5, and it's found in your bulletin. If you will, please turn to that place in the bulletin this morning. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity, thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. The New Testament today comes from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 12th through the 18th verse. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not see the end of the fading splendor. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when a man turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Here ends the Old Testament lesson, the New Testament lesson for today. We will now have the Holy Gospel read. It comes from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now, about eight days after these sayings, he took with him, this being Jesus, Peter and John and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory as well and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they wakened, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silence and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. Here ends the gospel for the day. We will now stand to sing the glory of Patria.
You may be seated. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, we began our worship service today with a play that recapped what it was that we began this season of Epiphany with. And that was the wise men coming and finding baby Jesus. And as I mentioned on that Sunday, the first Sunday in Epiphany, the wise men were led to Jesus by a bright light, brightness, light. We find as we move today now to the end of Epiphany, that same bright light, but it is manifest different than it was at the beginning of the season. It is for this reason that the symbolic light is what we refer to when we think of Epiphany, because light is a manifestation. During Epiphany, we focus on a greater manifestation than light itself. We focus on the creator of light. In today's gospel lesson, we see dazzling brightness. This dazzling brightness at the end of Epiphany is directly being made manifest in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord, who we know and who we accept in our theology as being truly God. But at the same time, we accept him as being truly man. This is what brings about our salvation, the fact that he is both truly God and both truly man. Now, in this scene, we not only see that Jesus is there and that he is dazzling bright as we saw the star, the star in the sky dazzling bright at the beginning of Epiphany, but we also see two figures that are there with Jesus on this day, this day that we call transfiguration. We call it transfiguration because Moses and Elijah, and most importantly, Jesus in this day, his body is transformed to something other than what it would normally be, what any human body would normally be. And that is this radiance, this glow, this dazzling brightness about his body. And it's not just him in this scene on top of the mountain. Moses and Elijah as well are dazzling bright as well because we see in the gospel that it says that they stood in glory as well. Throughout the Bible, God is referred to as brightness and as light. We do understand this always, and don't forget that this light is not God. This light was created by God. It is simply used as a symbol for God. We know that in ancient times there were people that actually worshipped the light, worshipped the sun, which was the greatest light that they knew. But, but we don't do that. We do not let the light replace who our living God, the Holy Trinity, is. But it is often referenced throughout the scriptures that um, God is as light. There are numerous examples of this. In Psalm 18, we find that David wrote, Yea, thou didst light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. Later in the Psalms, we find David once again, as he is rejoicing in the Lord, he wrote, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Later, we find in Micah, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. 
Later we find that St. John wrote, Again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. We find in 1 John, once again, God being referred to as a light, as we read. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him no darkness is at all. And then we find in the end of the Bible, Another reference of God as light. And this reference is to what our true hope in this life is. We read in the book of Revelation, and the city that it's making reference is the New Jerusalem, which is the heaven that we long for and that we are on our journey to. Here we read, And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. So here we put in total perspective the fact that life is indeed just a symbol. It is created by God as all things, including us, are created by God. But it is a symbol that we have used for God. But you notice that in Revelation we have found that in heaven, there is no need for the created light that we have on this earth. Because there in New Jerusalem, God's holy city, it is God himself who is the physical light. We find Moses and Elijah there on the mountain with Christ, and it is for good reason that he is there on Mount Hermon with Christ on that day. Because we know that Jesus said in the Bible when he was still living on earth that he came not to destroy the law or the prophets. He tells us that rather than coming to abolish the law and the prophets, he came to fulfill them. So we see here as Jesus is in the end of his ministry, we know that the text that we read goes on to say, our gospel today goes on to say, that Jesus left from the mountain, Mount Hermon, and set his sights on Jerusalem. Jesus at this transfiguration is doing what we are doing symbolically today as we end this season where we have studied his ministry and now we set our sights on Jerusalem too as we begin Lent this week with Ash Wednesday. And we now will set our sights on the end of Christ's life and on the suffering and death that he eventually had on the cross for our salvation. So as we are looking at the end of this story and we see that Moses and Elijah are there, we do indeed realize that they are not there just by accident. It was not that God just picked out two people to send from heaven to be with Christ that down the mountain. This was a very deliberate move because here it is verifying what Christ said, that he did not come to destroy the law. He did not come to do away with the prophets because here standing with him is the one who bore the law. Moses was the one who came down from Mount Sinai and actually gave the people, which today we are the people of God, Moses actually gave us that law. And he is standing here this day with Christ. And also here is standing what is thought by many people to be the grandest of all the prophets, Elijah. He is standing here that day too. So by God sending these two Old Testament figures to stand with Christ at the transfiguration, he is verifying what it is that Jesus had said when he said he was not here to abolish either the law 
or the prophets, but to fulfill what they were about. Now, this light that was radiating from Moses, Elijah, and of course, most of all today, is radiating from Jesus. God made it very clear at the end of this story where this light was coming from. It was coming from God. Even though Moses and Elijah were radiant with light, that was not power that came from within them. The way that God made this very clear was that the clouds surrounded the top of the mountain and here we have present God the Father in this cloud. And he clearly says to them, as you heard in the gospel lesson this morning, this is my beloved son, or as the translation that we use this morning, this is the chosen one. This is my beloved son. And then God gave us some very good advice. Listen to him. This light that is there, as I said, is created by God. God is making that clear and letting us know, with his voice being there present, and letting us know that beyond any doubt, Jesus is the Son of God. It has been proclaimed once again here as it was at Jesus' baptism. As we look at this light and know that it is from God, we understand that this light that Moses and Elijah had also can be ours. Not necessarily made manifest physically, but made manifest spiritually in our lives. As we look at Christian art going back centuries, and even some of the more modern Christian art that we have today, often you will notice something in this art. That these people that are depicted in the art, Christian people, saints like us, will have a glow around their heads. I'm sure that you've noticed this before. There is a glow around their heads. This signifies the light of Christ which glows in their life. We often call this light a halo. We also see the same light around Jesus' head but generally more radiant. And in those cases, we call that a nimbus when it is around the head of our Lord. This light, though it's made manifest in the pictures, we're all aware as we look around the room today, or at least I don't see it, maybe some of you do, we are all people of God and we are all Christians. But as we look around the room, we don't see that glowing around each other's head. It's, it's not made physically manifest in us today. But what it is made manifest in is in our spirituality. And it can take on through that spirituality, it can certainly take on a physical appearance. And it's the least bit of effort that it takes for us to allow God's light to shine from us in a physical way. And that is simply a smile. Just a smile. We can carry the light that Christ has put in our lives through his being made manifest in man and bringing salvation to us, he can take that light and use it to reach other people who have not come to the point that we are, the blessed space that we have entered. Jesus can use the light that is in us now to reach other people. And oftentimes it might be just as simple as a smile. I know you've heard me say this before, but I, I really believe in the power of a smile. Smiles can start conversations, but even if a conversation does not follow, a smile can brighten someone's life. Your smile as you're walking into the grocery store or as you go into your school classroom or as you walk around at the work that you do, your smile may set a person on the right course so that when the next Christian comes by, it takes a different phase and it moves on to where Jesus is shared with someone. Now, just because you have the ability to simply use a smile 
Don't let it stop there. In your own way, using the gifts that the Spirit has given each of you, and those gifts are all different. What the Spirit gives me a gift to reach someone with may not be the same gift that the Spirit has given you. But I will assure you that he has given you all a gift. Every one of you have the gift of prayer. You can use that gift to reach other people and let the light of Christ come from your lives. But don't let it stop with a smile and with prayer. We're getting ready to enter our Lenten season. As I told you last week, our focus is going to be on the word forgiveness. Now there is certainly a place where we can use Christ's light to reach other people's lives in our forgiveness of them. Also, as we go into Lent, explore the gifts that Christ has given you. Look into your heart. Spend some time meditating each day during Lent on what it is that God has given you and examine what it is in your life that you've been blessed with that you can use to spread that light that Christ has put in your life. Each one of you has a way beyond prayer and beyond a smile that you have been given. All you have to do is look for it. Let's all pray for each other during Lent that each person will be successful in finding that way. It is not going to be that every one of you will go up and share with someone the experience that you've had with Jesus because that may not be the gift that all of us here have been given. But explore in your life what that gift is as you go through your Lenten journey. Find that gift, put it to work during Lent, and not only put it to work during Lent, but as we reach the next season, the resurrection of our Lord in the Easter season, and then go on into the Pentecost season. Use that gift in your Christian life, and then repeat it over and over and over as we go through one church season after another through the years that we live the rest of our life. Let that light that Christ has made manifest in you shine out into the world. And we will draw people that are not within the fold of Christ today into his fold. Amen. We will now continue with our closing hymn, Take the Name of Jesus With You, which is found on page 235. And once again, we are using the green hymnals this morning. Page 235.
and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you. 